Welcome to the Red Sneaker Podcast, your guide to success in the worlds of writing and publishing. Now, here's your host, best-selling author and founder of the Red Sneaker Writers Center, William Bernhardt. Hello, Red Sneaker Writers. This is Episode 7, going out on December 3rd, 2018. The interview this time is with Janice Davis, one of my favorite people in the whole world of writing. She is a thriller author of The Holder's Dominion, but also she's been involved with video games and film. She's got an ongoing project initiated by the late Stan Lee. She is big time involved in the fandom, having appeared on panels at various conventions, more than 500 in the last several years. She's got a lot to say about the modern world of writing and marketing. It's stuff that the Red Sneaker writers need to hear, so hang around for that. But first, the news. First off in today's news segment, I wanted to note the passing of the great screenwriter and novelist, William Goldman. I don't want to turn these news segments into an ongoing obituary. Of course, last time I talked about the passing of Stan Lee, but how could you not? It was Stan Lee. But I feel the same way this time about William Goldman, who I read, I think I started reading him when I was a teenager, read The Princess Bride and was overwhelmed. And I'm talking about the novel, not the film. You loved the film? Go check out the book. It was trailblazing, meta Brilliant, funny, and it still holds up very well today. But when I was thinking about it, when I I read about uh, Goldman passing, I think he may be the first writer I ever read about writing. He wrote a book called Adventures in the Screen Trade, which is ostensibly about screenplay writing, but not really. It's really about writing. And a lot of the good, solid fundamentals about writing I learned at an early age from William Goldman, and I bet if you found that book, you could still learn some of the same lessons. What impressed me most was how down-to-earth he was. I mean, this was a guy who's got Oscars on his desk, but he's not being artsy. He's not trying to, you know, buffalo people with with how, how deep he is. He's telling people what they needed to know, and I think that influenced my writing, and I think now it influences the way I teach writing in those red sneaker books and at retreats and conferences, getting down to earth, telling people what they really need to know. Goldman was one of the first people, I think he was the first person I ever heard talk about structure, the three-act structure, and how important that was to creating a solid story. In fact, I quote him in probably story structure, one of the Red Sneaker books, saying writing is structure, you know. No no mincing, no beating around the bush. Writing is structure. You get those key elements in place, the three-act structure, the inciting incident, progressive complications, the dark moment, the climax, the denouement or resolution, and you're on your way to writing a solid story. And... He gave us a lot of great stories, and he gave us a lot of good information about writing, too. So I wanted to note that in today's news roundup. Second thing I want to talk about, Wattpad. Those who attended the Writers' Conference this year got to hear someone who has been very involved with Wattpad talk about how it has transformed her writing life. And that is still continuing to this day. I think there's a lot of perception out there that Wattpad is just for amateurs or just for kids. I don't think that's ever been true, but now more than ever, it is clearly not true. Just in case you're not up to speed on what Wattpad is, and that's Wattpad, W-A-T-T-P-A-D, in case you want to Google it, Wattpad has 65 million visitors every month. It's a digital literature, it's a a website and social networking app, basically. Sort of a place anybody can go on the internet to post their work, to get feedback, you know, positive or otherwise critiquing, and to get exposure for the work. It can be nurturing, highly interactive. Yes, its core does skewer kind of young. It's 13 to 35-year-olds, primarily in the readership, although there are other people as well. 
But those people are spending about 20 billion minutes per month. Yes, that was billion with a B. 20 billion minutes per month reading and critiquing user-generated stories. It seems to favor the genres of science fiction, young adult, poetry, but you can find other stuff there as well. You can also find a lot of fan fiction, which, as I've noted before, is gaining increasing credibility in the writing world. You may have read the story about the author who was writing Harry Styles fan fiction and managed to transform that into a serious multi-book writing contract with Simon & Schuster. Or you may recall that Fifty Shades of Grey started as Twilight fan fiction, which is true, and then it started getting a readership on the internet, and then the author was off into the big time. Now you can find fan fiction on Wattpad of Fifty Shades of Grey, like Fifty Shades of Drake and other spinoffs. Wattpad more recently has formed Wattpad Studios to evolve it into TV shows, movies, digital series. This year, and this is what's newsy about this story, they did something called The Kissing Booth, which is a film based on a 2011 story, which became a book series written by, when she started, the 15-year-old author Beth Rekels that was read 19 million times on Wattpad before being adapted into an original film that appeared on Netflix. Now, to be honest, it didn't get very good reviews. Did that stop it from being popular? Not in the slightest. According to IMDb, it was this year the fourth most popular film in the country after Deadpool 2, the Avengers movie, and Solo, the Star Wars movie, then comes The Kissing Booth, which is based upon, so it's a Netflix film based upon a Wattpad story that became a series. That should give you some indication of just how important digital has become to the book world. If you're not taking advantage of digital opportunities like Wattpad, to get feedback on your work, maybe it's time to think about it. Remember what what the author of The Martian did, posting his story, The Martian, chapter by chapter online, getting feedback, which allowed him to improve it and allowed him to turn it into a really spectacular book. By the time New York publishers got it, it had been vetted several times over, and that's part of what made it such a strong book. Third news item, I wanted to talk about Find Away Voices, another audiobook creation alternative. I've talked before about Draft2Digital, a wonderful service, and they've partnered with Find Away Voices to create audiobooks. Uh, I have talked at conferences and on this podcast about how successful, how popular audiobooks are right now. Seriously, if you're not If you've got a novel, some kind of story, and you haven't explored audiobook opportunities, you really should. Where people usually go is ACX, which is an online web page. It's owned by Amazon, and that's going to have pluses and minuses. Findaway Voices is giving you an alternative way to create and distribute your audiobooks through the usual places people buy audiobooks online. The advantage of Findaway Voices is they are offering greater royalty rates, even if you're not exclusive with them. ACX uh, doesn't offer quite as much in, in its royalty rates and how much it offers. The reason I'm hedging is because how much they give depends upon whether you're exclusive to ACX or not. If you commit to a multi-year exclusivity contract, then you'll get a larger rate, but it still won't be as much as what Findaway Voices offers. The advantage of ACX is that they have two ways of compensating narrators. You can either pay them a flat fee up front, or if they agree to it, you can give them a 50% cut of your subsequent royalties. Findaway Voices doesn't have that. You'll have to pay your narrator up front for their work, which is significant. A lot of time, a lot of effort. If you're talking about a full-length novel, though, you're probably looking at a little over $1,000 to possibly even more, depending upon who the narrator is. 
Now, if this is an audiobook that sells, that could turn out to be a terrific investment. You won't be splitting your royalties with anyone. But I know that that's not chump change and that some people may balk at that. What you got to ask yourself is how successful is my audiobook going to be? And if you're thinking this audiobook might not be successful enough to make that back, instead of backing away from doing the audiobook, what you ought to be asking yourself is what can I do to make that audiobook sell better? My interview today is with Janice Davis, thriller author of The Holder's Dominion and much, much more. She is one of the most energetic, positive, generous people you're ever going to find in the writing world. And this is a very generous community, but Janice is something else again. She's, as I said, a novelist, but she's also done a lot of work for film companies. She's done work for video game companies and, in fact, wrote, co-wrote the video game Omen Sight. She's involved in a project that was initiated with, by the late Stan Lee, which is still continuing to this day. She's got a podcast called The Storyteller Chatcast, and she is all over the world of fandom conventions where I first met her, uh, science fiction, comic book, all kinds of pop culture conventions. In just the last few years, and despite the fact that she's got a four-year-old daughter at home, she has appeared on more than 500 panels in various conventions. There are not many people who know as much about what's going on in the world of writing and successful marketing as Janice Davis. Here's what she had to say. Janice, thanks for being on the podcast. Thank you for having me, Bill. I'm super thrilled to be here. Okay, first question. If you could give one piece of advice to somebody who wants to write, what would it be? I love that it's like right out of the gate, first of all. That's awesome. <laughs> no messing around on this podcast. <laughs> Absolutely not. Just dive right in. That's that is my motto when I'm whenever I'm on a panel. So I will happily oblige. I, I would say uh that the, the best piece of advice I could offer succinctly would be to narrow your scope. And and what I mean by that is I think all of us have the urge or the desire, or we have 10 different stories in our heads or, or even more than, more than that, right? They multiply mm -hmm. or they piggyback off of each other. And I, I, I realize that if we can stop a second and kind of meditate on what's really, really the, the biggest fire, so to speak, that you need to put out in your creative, <laughs> in your creative fireplace, focus on that because there's nothing more overwhelming than sitting there and going, okay, well, which story should, or should I work on today? Should I work on my, you know, Lord of the Rings type fantasy saga or my, you know, sci-fi to the next planet, you know, you know, epic, uh, uh, duology or what have you. And I, it can be really frustrating. And so I always say that creativity comes from really recognizing what you want to change in the world or echo in the world because that that fire that gets you spun up is 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 really the gold and the magic that leaps off of the page. So if if you if if all of us writers can narrow our scope, think about what story is truly demanding our attention now and commit to writing time to that story at least four or five days a week, that will jumpstart your productivity and your creativity. I really believe 100%. That's terrific advice. And exactly like the opposite of what I would have expected you to say, because to me, you're like the person who's everywhere <laughs> you're, you're doing, you've done fantasy work, you've done video games, uh, you know, you're doing conferences, obviously you've written thrillers. Um, it must be really hard for you to focus. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm, you're, you're so in tune because it's true. And I, I do have to prioritize based on deadlines. Like I will, I will work on if I have a deadline for a video game that I'm writing for and they need something, you know, two weeks from today, I will crunch, so to speak. That's what they, you know, say in video game world. Um, I'll crunch just working on that every day for two weeks and send it in and then hop back over to, you know, a novel that I'm working on for uh, a movie company. Say, say, for example, like I'm writing a trilogy right now for the recently passed end. Lee. Oh, that, that was a, that was a, a hard day uh, yeah. to uh, work through. Um, and uh, a movie company called Benaroya Pictures. 